All right, so I saw Paul Thomas Anderson's The Master last night. This is kind of a hard movie to talk about, but after reflecting on it and sleeping, I think I'm ready. And now I don't really want to go into any of the plot details, really. It's just something that you have to experience for yourself. But I do have some things that I really do want to mention here. So, okay, okay. We have Joaquin Phoenix as Freddy, this World War II Navy vet who left the war with some rather serious mental problems. I mean, he apparently had problems before, but I don't think the war really helped him out in that regard. And he's a drifter now, he's just going around looking for work here and there, always getting into trouble and having to leave. And he is just messed up in the head. Like seriously, I, I cannot stress enough how hard to watch Joaquin Phoenix is in this. He's just a creepy, crazy, dirty, drunk, scummy human being. He's really just so wrong. But it's such a good freaking performance. And Freddy's drifting eventually leads him to meeting Lancaster Dodd, the writer and intellectual played by Philip Seymour Hoffman. And of course, Hoffman is freaking great. He can go from this charismatic leader of this group of people who hang on his very word to suddenly just turning into a complete angry douchebag at the drop of a hat. But then he picks himself up in a millisecond and he's back to leading his followers to enlightenment. And one thing that I absolutely loved in this is that the characters, and the movie itself really, never explain his methods. You just know that these people really believe in them, truly, deeply believe. I think that's a really nice touch and it works perfectly for the Scientology premise. And yes, seriously, seriously, seriously. This movie's about Scientology. Like, uh, I don't know how anybody can claim that this wasn't about Scientology. I've, I've researched Scientology. I know what it's about. This is freaking Scientology. Words, phrases, names, dates, locations may have been changed, but it's completely analogous to the life and teachings of L. Ron Hubbard. But honestly, that makes for a really compelling and great movie. This stuff is fascinating. It's what makes it such an interesting flick. You want to understand the reasoning for all this, and what the goal even is. You're full of questions and it just sucks you in, just like Scientology does. And I have to mention the direction here. P.T. Anderson asks a lot of his actors. He loves these long, lingering shots of people that just like last two minutes. He loves to make his actors just do line after line without cuts. It's, it's ridiculous, I don't even know how it's possible. But he really finds a way to get them to do it, and it's a technique that really works well for his films. And then that signature creepy violin music. Ugh. It's so haunting and tense. Now, I think I do have to make some comparisons and contrasts here to uh, There Will Be Blood. I, I think it kind of comes naturally. But that's really just because Daniel Day-Lewis is such an actor, and he plays such a character in that. And this movie doesn't really do that. Like, you physically don't want to look at Joaquin Phoenix. He's just so horribly, horribly messed up. But Daniel Day-Lewis in There Will Be Blood, well, you can't possibly look away from him. However, I think that this factor plays in really well with the master because of the dynamic with Philip Seymour Hoffman. You can see how this horrible man could follow a leader like Dodd, and you can't look at Freddy so you constantly look to Dodd to help him. And that's what I think makes this movie really, really work. You want to know the truth. You do seek enlightenment, both for our own main character and for yourself in the plot. And it does just suck you in completely. So I thought it was a great flick, long and slow, but ever engrossing. I can see how it may not be for everyone. Actually, it really probably isn't for everyone. And now this is coming from someone who hated Tree of Life. But but it's not like Tree of Life at all. It, it has a plot and it's, it's really intriguing. So by all means, go see it. Oh, but make sure you see There Will Be Blood first. Really, I think it makes the movie more interesting if you know Anderson's style beforehand.